Uh, welcome to the audit committee of which end district council. Um, can I start the agenda with apologies for absence? So. Yes, we've had apologies of abs for absence from Councillor Stephen Bateman, Peter Griffiths, and also from the independent member Graham Moore. Thank you very much. So I'm very grateful for the team members. John and Liz, who've made it today, because otherwise we wouldn't be taking place. And congratulations to you. Uh, declarations of interest. No, I see none. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Are there any points or matters of correction that anyone wishes to raise? I haven't got any. So in that case, we will move swiftly on to item five, oh, item four, actually, principal thing of the day. Uh, Grace A. Charge, the budget report. Uh, Jane, do you want to say some introductory words? Um, thank you, Chair. Very conscious that members may have already seen this through the executive board meeting and also be going to overly in scrutiny. But really, the, the main thing is just to talk around the uncertainties. We still have uncertainties in our own specific funding and the allowance that will be made to us, which we think we'll receive around the, the week, around the 16th, prior to that 12th, 16th of um, December. 21st. 21st. Oh, sorry, 21st. I was going to say. The word on the street, 21st. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I missed that word on the street. Sorry, Chair. 21st. <laughs> the the, right, the so. word on my street is maybe even later than that. Oh, okay. we'll, well, we'll, we'll stick with Alice's street for now then, Chair, if that's OK, on the 21st. Um, yesterday, we heard in the, the autumn statement that we can increase counts tax by two, up to 2.99%, which will be in, um, we will incorporate into future budget report for the February meeting, just to give that scenario. Other than that, there was not very much yesterday, and, of course, we no clarity about which haven particularly in terms of what we'll receive. Um, the report is fairly self-explanatory. It talks through the changes that we've got for this financial year, so for 22, 23. Um, and I think the importance of section 313 in the report, sorry, 313 onwards, um, is that we're actually doing very well on our investments income, which yeah. is great, and it picks up on the next report, which is the Treasury, Treasury Management Strategy. But particularly for this year, we're looking at an additional um, 777,000 in this financial year, which more than offsets the additional costs in this financial year. And in next year, which is at 323, we've got um, 1.7 million pounds worth of additional income coming through. And I know Councillor King mentioned it at his Z board up, up with 0.4, so 40% of um, employee time to generate 1.7 million. But we did clarify that if we double the time, <laughs> we won't double the, no. double the investments, <laughs> but it's really good news. Um, so we've got a drawdown on our budgets, which are in the money plan, which is on Appendix B in the report. And what that does is it shows the balances position. So that's the balance. We've got earmarked reserves where we know that we are looking to spend some money on future projects. So we've earmarked reserves, set them to one side. But we also have balances which have been generated from underspends in previous years. So at the beginning of this year, we got balances of 13.1. Oh, sorry, 11.1. It's my I need my glasses. We're getting going up to we assume for 23-24. By the end of 23-24, we'd be only drawing down 132,000, so we'd get 13.5 million. But very clearly, as members can see, we go right down to 4.9 million by the end of 27-28. And that's mainly due to the fact that we've assumed we will lose our business rates growth by 25-26, which currently is 2 million pounds. So 4 million of that drop, it, well, 6 million actually, will be 6 by the end of 27-28, is due to that potential drop in business rates. We feel we have been quite prudent, Chair, in the budget because we have assumed we won't receive any lower tier services grant and that we won't receive any new homes bonus, which, again, we kind of feel fairly confident on that now that we will receive mm. it, but until we get the settlement figures, we'd rather not include it in the budget. You've also got the capital programme um, and the fees and charges, Chair, but I don't think there's any particular detail to go into on those. So I'll take any... Um, Alison, I'll take any questions. Thanks. I mean, I have a series of rather tedious questions, but 
Does anybody else want to ask <laughs> a question? Les, you look like you've got a question. Your questions will be far more intelligent than mine, so if I could just ask, ask one initial one. I appreciate we won't get specific information for Witchhaven until the actual settlement comes through in December, but um, the change in the um, living, national living wage, won't that end up being quite chunky through our contractors, etc.? So we've already built in 9.5% um, into next year, so we've already got the increase that they've asked for in this year and then we've put a further almost 10 percent into next year which we're hoping will meet that those additional costs that we get back from the um contractors but it is of course only an estimate at this point in time that's the, the best estimate that we have but we will be looking at that because of course we don't set the formal budget till february we will see whether there's any additional costs we need to put through what i was trying to get at and maybe i'm off the off the range was that um things like um dustbin service and things like that must be very intensive. Um, I would have thought on lower wages. Um. Sorry, so we all have, we've already allowed for what we think that will be. I appreciate that it's gone up maybe a little bit more than we thought, but we'd already estimated an increase, so we've built that into the budgets already. So um, you had estimated the change, the increase in the living wage? CPI. We, in, well, what we've done is we'd estimated an increase in CPI, which includes a government, in, you know, a national estimate of what the living wage increase will be. But if it's more than that, what we'll be... Oh, yes, sorry, Martin. We will adjust if there's anything else, but we've already increased our contract payments in the budget by almost 10%, and we are, we are hopeful that that would cover all of those costs. Liz, I think um, we hadn't particularly uh, anticipated anything specifically, but in discussions with the officers, I'd been concerned that we erred on the cautious side rather than the uh, the less cautious in terms of what we put forward. So we've put a fairly healthy cost of, uh, increase figure into the budget. What you've identified, I think, is something that's worth going back to, particularly FCC and probably Smart Cut and Continental on, and saying, given that we now know what the change in the minimum wage is, can you give us a, be a, a reasonable estimate of what it's going to do and if we need to look at the provisions we've made in the budget already, we, as I mentioned at the um, exec board on um, Tuesday night, we can then go and refine it during the process. I think you've highlighted a very good point that we need to go away and do a bit more investigation. We'd been fairly cautious. We hadn't necessarily seen it being the living wage. We'd just been cautious across the board. I mean, the answer is I just don't really know enough to know whether... I mean, I would be surprised if they were on the national living wage, but because of the scarcity of labour, I bet you they're, they're probably above it. But I think it may be more pertinent with the grounds maintenance contracts than it might be with um, FCC. But we're, the danger is we're guessing. I've just spoken to Jane and Alice, and they're going to go away and get some better guidance from them so that we will at least have something to work with rather than just, um, dare I say, a bit more of an inspired guess. Um, any other questions? Go on. Um, so we, we utilised all of it last year, so up to the end of March 2022. We'll, we can get some figures as to how much we've spent to date, because, of course, we've still got another four, four months left of this financial year, but we can get that off the accounts tax team. And I did mention at exec board that when we get to the end of this financial year, we're looking to um, reorganise our reserves and to potentially reprofile them to say, instead of them to, for 
to be, for example, COVID projects, if we're now saying that we haven't got the level of those projects moving forward, we'd look to reprovide them into cost of living support, which potentially may increase that 60, but we wouldn't just be putting it in without any context. We'd like to see what we've spent over the last couple of years first, but we can let you know where we are to date. Um, if I can, so if you're changing reserve, you can do that during the... If you're just funding something from reserve, we can do that during the year because it's no impact on council tax because we've got the money sitting there. We can fund something different from it, so it's not a problem. Yeah, it has no effect on the preset. Yeah. And I was just interested in Herefordshire joining our business rates pool because the business rates pool has been... You know, a great success, I would suggest. I mean, I was still under the impression that it was probably sitting on a considerable risk reserve. It, it isn't any longer. It distributed it. Because uh, the, the point I was going to make is, you know, I don't wish to be mean to Herefordshire, but I have a nasty feeling they're not going to contribute a great deal to the business rates. Um, Ooh, to be honest. Well, I I wonder. I mean, I did slightly wonder if we had to have them, but Harry from Worcester Fire Brigade had been in it for a good length of time. If I can, just to um, explain that point, it's the way that the pools work. They are quite complex in terms of some councils who receive the business rates and how and the council tax how that all works through. But if you have an additional partner. And um, we've done a lot of work on the Herefordshire one because, of course, all the partners need to be happy with that. There is a benefit. There is still a benefit to Witchhaven. I can't think how much it is off the top of my head, but there's still a, a benefit of having more partners in the pool than less because what happens is that partner's levy, instead of going to government, it comes part of it comes back to the pool and then gets shared out. So it is better for us to have more partners in than less, which is good news. Great. I'm historically very agitated about getting drawn back into the Herefordshire area. I, mean, I, I, I understand. I, I, it's, it's a percentage of their business rates income that they would be rebating back to Whitehall that's retained in the pool. Yeah, that's fine, providing they haven't got... Um, I'm trying to think of a big industry. Bulmers um, giving up and moving out of the county or... You know, they have a sudden loss, and then we we pick up the the, uh, the idea of the pool is that you you are sheltered from the business rate loss, but that's the risk you take with this, I suppose. Do you want to come? I was just going to say, whilst we haven't got a risk reserve any, anymore across the pool, we have done, and we have an external organisation who do for the on behalf of the pool all of the risk scenarios, look at all the businesses within particular districts, within particular county areas to ensure that we are not setting ourselves up to fail for any businesses through the future. And we could say the same about which home or any of the, the partners, unfortunately, in, in the future. But the main thing is the pool is still of benefit to which Haven council. Wait, there are so many little ways in which we're getting sucked back into the old borders. Um, and I particularly worry about the NHS aspect of it. And um, I... Um Three percent or five? Two two percent or five at the moment. Two percent or five at the moment, but it, what I've seen, it's two point nine nine percent, and it doesn't say all ten, does it? Not yet. Not yet. No. Maybe. Yeah. And um, just we'll, when you get the budget scrutiny, sorry, when members who are involved in budget scrutiny, the budget scrutiny papers in that pack, it will also show those scenarios of the additional income that would raise or the 
income that we would lose should we not go for the 2.99%. Um, just for a point of clarification, I mean, you, you are absolutely right and being extremely prudent. Um, I know that you don't think that the new homes bonus is going to disappear in its entirety. I mean, I'd probably share that belief that you're going to see it pared back yet again. So I think you're absolutely right to put a to in effect put a zero in from 23 to 24 onwards. Um, you seem to have more faith in the lower tier services grant. I'm not too sure I do, but anyway. Um, if I can just to mention, so on the lower tier services grant, yeah. we have taken it out also. So it was 10. 105.3 and the 183, we have taken that out for 23.24. I know you have the but year I think after. We, we, yeah. we do think that maybe we will still we will still receive that, but we didn't want to be assume it within the budget report. So that's one of the areas. And of course, new homes bonus potentially we'd be using it for community schemes, community yeah. legacy grants, or not. You know that will be a member's gift. Should we should we receive it? Um, I was surprised in four of the of the points you were raising, that you were predicting a smaller reduction because I was under the impression that, that very few people didn't pay their council tax and that would be well outweighed by the number of new bills that were coming on. Alice Chair. Chair, I think that's me being overly prudent it's, it's not to do with um uh, people not paying it's more to do with the increase in um local council tax support that i'm assuming what i haven't factored into that is, is growth we will have growth um it's likely we will have a small increase in our tax base rather than a reduction but at, at, at this stage i've just been super prudent and assumed a small reduction we are working on the detail of the council tax base at the moment yeah, it'll, it'll go to exec board in January. Um, that, that always strikes me as being a very dark art somehow. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I just wanted to pose a couple of questions on the revenue money plan. Um, because we, we, we are now projecting pretty heavy um, deficits in heading towards the end of the plan, which um, cumulatively, I suppose, will be about £9 million. Pounds. So it's starting, I would suggest, to become an issue that the executive ought to be aware of. But there is plenty of time and lots of room for manoeuvre. So, you know, I'm not particularly worried about it. Um, but where I just was slightly worried was we have considerable changes coming in waste collection. Um, and with the continuation of uh, Minister Rebecca Power, Pow? Pow, that's her name. Um, I think this is going to take place in 25, 26, is what they seem to be targeted for. And I was surprised that we're not starting to model any of that in. Is it just too early because the executive haven't made any decision on exactly what they're going to do? Or am I trying to run every scenario and that isn't really the role of the medium term plan? I think my answer might be um, to just say, yes, you are running every possible scenario, but I think that's a little bit of a cheap job. Oh, sorry, that's a mad pun at audit. Cheap jibe. Um, uh, I think, yeah, to go back to your first comment, yes, the executive is aware that we are starting to eat into reserves um, on, on these figures, um, but it is a little bit long-term and we've only got to pick up on one or two of the things where we've been prudent about not getting grants or not getting income streams from to change the position, so we're well aware of it. In terms of the uh, waste... Um, I can assure you that the exec board member keeps um, telling us about problems or the potential problems with the waste contract. I think it might be that it's just a little bit too early for us to know what the cost implications uh, might or might not be. Um, and as you say, it's targeted for one year. Um, if I'm being cynical, 
I suspect it'll take another two to arrive and therefore might be outside this money plan. Um, who knows? Um, but I think it's a good point for us to take away and be conscious of that we need to do a bit more digging into. Um, I mean, the other thing that you don't assume, of course, is that there won't be a successor to the business rates retention, which is where the main you know, gap starts to develop. I mean, yes, I understand there'll be the reset to zero, but then presumably we would we would start to have business rates retained here as growth took place, hopefully. Yeah. And um, that's what we're hopeful of, Chair, that we can then build, start building that growth back in again till it's reset. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, I had a look through the, uh, through the charges, as always. You know, I'm always amused that... Uh, it's 19 quid to kennel my dog this year if you managed to pick it up on, uh, on as opposed to the 28 that they charged me down the road. Uh, Is that so, a challenge for us to I, well, pick I your thinking, dog up? <laughs> it's an abs absolute bargain, but, you know, you do also charge, though, for picking it up, of course, <laughs> to be forgotten. Um, I didn't really have any great, you know, insights into... Into the into the fees and charges, um, and that was about it from me, to be honest. Other final points, if not, um, can we just note the report, and we go on to the next item. I do note that you didn't quote the uh, daily rate for a dangerous dog. Oh, no, yeah, no, mine's very well bad. Right, it's a lick you to death rather than <laughs> anything else. Grant, you just text me for to get to the end of. End of Yeah, that's it. Good stuff. You get the whole works. Um, OK, the Treasury mid-year update. Um, Jane. Thank you, Chair. This is the mid-year update on how we're performing with our investments, how we're managing against our strategy, and how we're performing against our performance indicators. We, we've had high balances, um, which we've been retaining for some time. Um, with improving interest rates, um, this has meant that we've been able to achieve much better um, interest and um, improve the amount of uh, interest that we can earn. We've dipped slightly on two of our performance indicators, which is uh, the average rate of return on investments and the weighted average time to maturity. Um, and this, this has been deliberate because we've, we've kept, deliberately kept some investments very short term hence why we've had a large amount uh, with the DMO, which uh, Councillors Hardman and King know about, um, so that we don't lock in lower interest, interest rates in an improving market. But we're quite happy that the benchmark should be achieved by year end. Um, overall, we're performing very strongly. Happy to take any questions. That's right. Yes, yes, Chair, it's Link. Would be a benefit to us if it did take place, so. Um, I was interested by the spread between the Public Works Loan Board and the bank rate. 
which you would think would be consistent, but isn't. And well, I'll never understand why, but it's a question really for Link rather than for you, I suspect. Um, any other points people want to raise? If not, duly noted. And we will move on to the next item, which is our internal audit report. Andy, thank you very much for coming. Nice to see you. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, all. Uh, yeah, f familiar report for, for members, this one. Um, it is the progress report. It was written at the end of September. It is fairly brief, this one, um, in in um, in real terms, but um, it does provide members with a commentary and a confirmation of doing continuing progress for the audits uh, since the last progress was uh, presented before committee. One finalised report... Um, is within, uh, within within the report this afternoon, and that can be found in Appendix D, page 71. No high priority recommendations reported, um, so that's that's very satisfying. Um, and um, as far as the recommendations that have been um, made, there's very a very clear management plan in progress um, in order to uh, deal with the the potential issue um, and mitigate any potential risk. So. Again, um, anything that has been highlighted is um, well under control um, uh, from, from a corporate base, uh, um, basis. Treasury management report has been finalised since uh, the report was written, um, so that will be reported before committee next next time you sit. Um, and we're, we're currently working within the core financials area, um, which is quite a, a, a substantial part of the plan. Um, in this 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 quarter and and probably also into the early um, the early uh, January time of, of, of Q4 as well, and again we'll be bringing back those um, those outcomes from there. The follow-up program has continued. Um, again, we report by exception. No exceptions to report. You'll you'll note that um, there is a report within your pack this afternoon at page 76, Appendix E. Um, which shows that um, the recommendation that was made has in fact been implemented. So again, um, that one um, doesn't need to be followed up um, any further because it's been addressed and we, we've evidenced that. Regarding um, National Fraud Initiative, the data sets were uh, due to be uploaded by today. Today was the deadline um, for those. And I'm pleased to be able to report that all of the data sets required for, for Witchhaven have been update, uh, uploaded. So we, we will now await the results um, from those, those data sets. There are essentially two more data sets um, that will be uploaded uh, during January next year, which is um, single person discount and electoral uh, registration. Um, but um, the, the actual deadline for those doesn't fall due until um, January next year. So um, th th those are also in hand. We'll keep a, a watching brief on those um, and uh, provide any any uh, assistance where 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 required. But uh, again, it's 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 very satisfying that the uh, all of the data sets because uh, it does create quite a lot of work across the whole organisation to to pull these data sets together to a to a given specification. Those those have all been uploaded. Um, and um, um, by the, the deadline of today. I think that's probably um, all I need to say um, on this one, Chair, but happy to take any questions. Thank you. Um, no, Andy, thanks very much and reassuring that there were no um, matters that were substantive enough to to our attention. Um, just on your table of work on page uh, 66, I, I was a bit surprised that complaint handling, unless I've misunderstood this, is warranting 15 days of work. I wouldn't have thought we had that many complaints doing, but maybe we do. <laughs> A, a chair with, with with any plan, um, we 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 just have to make a uh, what amounts to an, uh, an indicative um, decision regarding budget. Um, if if it took a lot less than that, then 
obviously we would only use the days that uh, that are required. So um, if it uh, if it only took half of those days, then we, we would only be uh, looking to book half those days um, against it. So it's it, it is a, a bit of a judgment um, depending on on what we think we may find or what what we might not find. Um, and obviously this is done well in advance. So um, where um, as, as part of the, 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 the plan and the way it's put together, um, we, we just have to put a budget against it. And um, as, as a consequence, sometimes the budgets are perhaps a little on the general side, um, whereas other times we, we find that we've been a bit mean because of, of, of what actually comes out as part of the audit. But it just gets adjusted accordingly, and I, I speak um, um, with Jane um, in regards to the plan, and we will we'll agree any adjustments between us and then report back to committee to ensure that um, members are aware of, of what's taking place. Thank you. I suppose what, um, what really drew it to my attention was I didn't know what LGO stood for. Local government organisation, local government office. Ombudsman. Ah, OK. Oh, well, anything that involves him might take 15 days. Good. We do report somewhere complaints and compliments, but I, I, I struggle with the figures. It's in signals of success. Pick that up and come back to me. Mainly people complaining about planning. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, well, um, that wouldn't be surprise me as being the major generator of the complaints. Yeah. Uh, good. Okay, if we can just duly note the report for the record. Thank you very much indeed, Andy, and thank you for coming as always and keep up the good work. Um, just moving on to... Um, what are we moving on to? That's drawing near the end of our meeting, isn't it? Oh, the statement of accounts update. Yes, sorry, I knew there was something that was oral. So, over to you. There is, Chair. Uh, we're on our last probably three, two items that we're just um, having discussions with our external audit. We have um, back in, well, was it June? When, we, when did we submit the account? How long have they been going on now? Year and a year, over a year since they've been with us. I'm sorry, Chair, I was just checking with Alice how long they've been with us. Last November they started. Last November they started. Um, they've Brought a couple of queries fairly recently, um, which we've gone back and we've pushed back on. But we feel we're just doing a little bit of work on one of them, and then the other one may be reported through to members. It's fairly, fairly minor. But we're hoping for the next meeting that we will have their opinion. That's the position we're in at the moment, um, Chair. Fingers crossed. I mean, I, I'm glad that we are making progress, frankly, because I was going to suggest that we, you know, write to one of the senior partners to complain rather bitterly. And I don't know whether Dara Singh's still there uh, down in London. I think he's retired, to be honest. Uh, I was trying to think of anybody else I knew who was left at Ernst and Young, but, you know... If, I mean, if they are nearly finished, it's probably now not the moment to throw stones. And I did notice that um, in your fees and charges, of course, we're anticipating 150% uplift in our audit fees, um, which well, I was hard-pressed, to be frank, to find that the 40, what they were charging us before was value for money. I'm even more hard-pressed to find that 150 cents increase is going to be value for money. But um, I made this point before that I think the complexity of the audit report uh, has actually not shed much light or transparency on the organisation's finances, to be honest. 
But um, I know that going concern opinions are very important to some people. But as far as I know, nobody's proposing that local government is no longer a going concern. But at that note, thank you very much indeed for your update. If I could just ask members of the panel to note our next two uh, dates, which I have forgotten, although I put them in my diary this morning. January and April, yeah. In, in terms of the accounts, sorry, yeah. in terms... Uh, I think we're as confident as we've been probably for the last 16 months, more confident than the last 16 months. We do feel as if we're just there with them now. They have a team that seems to be going through the level of detail in a little bit more uh, robust way than perhaps we've had previously so we are we are almost there i'd like to think in the next two to three weeks that i'll get the clearance meeting with them If, if I can, Chair, we, we do on a regular basis go back to our, maybe not the senior partners, but our partner um, at EY to keep pushing and pushing. And they are as apologetic that they just haven't had the resource all the time and the capacity to complete the accounts. And not that it, it's not particularly relevant for us, but we are in across South Worcestershire. We are, the, we are nearly there, but the other two organisations with EY are still nowhere near a completion of their accounts. Did you hear that? Well, you're reluctant to pay. Uh, well, I'm reluctant to pay for a lousy service. And I think it's really important that they understand we're not just saying, please get on with it. We're saying it is essential that this can be properly considered by the existing council. If I can, through you, Chair. So a couple of points there. The increase, um, the public sector, you may remember PSAA, Public Sector Accounts and Audit Committee. Appointments. Appointments, sorry. We went with them for tender nationally. They went out to tender. And we now have um, a new auditor from 23, 24. 23, 24. And that's the increase. So the new tender across the piece, across the whole of the, the nation, Every organisation, every local council is now having to pay those kind of levels. There. So instead of us paying 60,000, we're now to 150,000. So it won't be EY, it will be another organisation, which hopefully will give us a, a, a more comprehensive and a better audit service than we're currently having. So, it, But it won't be EY, we will be losing them for the 23, 24. So we won't be paying them any more money. Um, and we won't be paying the existing auditors no, more money. No, no. So the, the budget is for the future. Future. Um, then the element around getting it, ensuring that we've got those accounts through for the, this audit committee in the current, before May, I'm as confident as I possibly can be, and I will be pushing them to that extent as well. What are the implications if we don't achieve that? The, the one. There aren't statutory deadlines anymore in terms of the accounts, so it's just reputation for them. It's not good. We have hit every single deadline that we needed to hit with the, and given them all of the information. So it, there's not actually any um, consequence of not getting... We've, so we published our accounts by the date, pre-audited. You don't have a date now of when they need to be post-audit because it's just taken so long for the auditors across. And this is a national problem. It's not just EY, unfortunately. It's a I think what happened was, way back when, four years ago probably, when the tenders were put out, the, perhaps because the value and the capacity weren't tied up. In That's why we're now looking at 150000 as opposed to the 60000 that we currently pay to get what is going to hopefully be seen as a comprehensive and quality audit for the future the reputational risk lies that if we publish accounts which are then subsequently changed by the auditor because he didn't think they were right we would be open to you know some comments fortunately that's not what's happening um the the obligation for them to do it by any particular deadline is gone um, it's just a, 
and it's it's more of a nuisance and a difficulty for our staff because the workload is planned to do six months on planning the budget and six months on the audit. If the auditor then comes in whilst we're trying to set the budget, which is what happens, mm -hmm. it puts our staff under quite a lot of strain to deal with the two things. The, the, the system is set up so that it can deal with the two tasks at different times in the year. And if our auditor doesn't work with us, it gives us, a di us and other councils a difficulty. Um, but they seem to be a bit... Um, shrug their shoulders on that one. I can see that that is a real difficulty. I assume that it affects most councils in the country. So why the hell can't, we sort, can't the government sort it out so that we're reflecting what is needed and not what an auditor chooses to do? I think the problem is, as Jane put her finger on, it's lack of resources. They just did not have or don't have the people to do it. They took on jobs they weren't capable of dealing with. If I put it in blunt terms, the difficulty is we can't get rid of them because we're under a contract. And we've got limited ability to go and beat them up. And you don't have any idea how many councils have not had their audit signed off. I mean, I've forgotten what the figures were and I would be out of date. We think figures around 40 to 50% have, so you're probably talking about 50 to 60% hadn't. But that was a little while ago as well, I think. I think they're trying to, as much as possible, get the capacity in. Because we, we've got in, international auditor colleagues now who are auditing our accounts from, for EY. So we, we're literally having teams meetings with, with auditors who are sitting in other parts of the world to ensure that the accounts are completed. Yeah, I mean, certainly the last week, well, the figure I thought was over 40 percent hadn't had the audit signed off. I mean, although I, I hate to disagree with uh, uh, the deputy managing director, I, I do think there is a slight reputational possibility of damage to the public because while we've done everything we could, you know, do. Um, there was a gentleman who lived in Cropthorne who used to challenge me pretty relentlessly about the accounts and if he saw that the auditors hadn't signed them off in due time he was, became extremely suspicious as to why and there was always a deep and dark reason you know I mean, at the county, I'm referring to, because it was normally the waste to energy plant contract or something like that. Um, but um, he used to write to me on quite a regular basis. Sadly, he's no longer with us, but... You know, it is, there is a slight reputational you know, danger, I suppose, but that's it. OK, on that note, uh, I can wish you all a happy Christmas. <laughs> In the middle of November, and uh, you know, hope the eggnog's good or whatever your favourite tipple is. Be good.